Welcome everyone. So my name is Fabien Parent. So I'm working from Linaro, and today we'll talk about uh, bringing a Rust abstraction to embedded Linux. So I will start with introducing myself. So I've been a senior embedded engineer at Linaro for about two years. I'm working from British Columbia, Canada, but uh, if you can recognize my accent, uh, I'm from France originally. <laughs> So, so what I'm doing at Linaro is I'm helping companies to build projects on top of Qualcomm SOCs. Uh, so most of my contributions are in Linux and Ewood, and I've been working on these two components for about 10 years. So this is some little advertisements for Linaro. Um, so, Linaro has a strong influence for ARM. So, in the past, before 2010, the ecosystem was quite fragmented. Uh, every SOC was uh, SOC manufacturer was uh, recreating the same stuff, but uh, nothing was much upstream. So, one of Linaro's goal was to unify everything and to try to get uh, the ARM ecosystem uh, uh, quite functional and ready to use for anyone. So we're here for Rust. So why do we want Rust in the kernel in the first? So it's probably not for that reason, but uh, Rust <coughs> is the most admired languages according to Stack Overflow. So I don't really agree. I like Rust, I, but I don't really agree because uh, I've written a lot of languages in the past, and I don't see any reason for that. Um, but the admired JavaScript, so they are wrong. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, you cannot trust the Stack Overflow. So <laughs> if you copy past from Stack Overflow, you are a bad developer. So I guess it's only from bad developers that you get this kind of uh, statistics. <laughs> So C has been around for 50 years. It's been a very long time. The language didn't change much uh, since C89. The benefit of it is that the syntax is pretty simple. It's easy to learn you can, because there's not much to learn about it. And because it's low level, it's pretty efficient. But because of that, it's easy to write and put it. Uh, uh, code that uh, has, uh, like, has some issue related to memory management, uh, concurrency issue, and all sorts of undefined behavior that can happen. So Rust was started about 10 years ago, and it's getting some new release, like about every six weeks. So it's a little bit different because it's a full-fledged languages. It's a lot harder to learn. It takes a lot longer to learn. There's some new concepts that you cannot find in most of the languages, like ownership and borrowing. Uh, but despite that, they manage to keep uh, efficient languages. When you look at benchmark, C is always the fastest, but Rust is very uh, close to it. Uh, so. That's one of the reasons that Rust might be the successor for uh, the C programming languages. Other benefits is that uh, Rust forces you to handle errors. You cannot just ignore what the function returns to you. You have to handle it. And just this can like avoid so many bugs. And Rust try to be efficient by doing like zero cost optimization for compile checks. So everything is done at the compiler level before trying to do everything at runtime like some other languages that shows uh, safety through uh, runtime checks. So for me, the main reason to add Rust to the kernel is for safety. So Rust will not let you compile 
code that manipulate directly pointers. You have to use some special keyword to say that it's unsafe. This allows you to uh, to make sure that when you do code reviews, you are looking at the unsafe part of the code to make sure that everything is correct. And everything that is not in the unsafe block, the compiler is able to verify that uh, the behavior is as expected by the standard. So right now, the usage for Rust in the kernel is uh, only limited to write device driver. You cannot write a core framework in Rust for the simple reason that uh, Rust is using Clang and LLVM. And uh, the Linux kernel supports way more uh, architectures than Clang. So we are only able to use Rust for device drivers that uh, uh, that won't interfere with the wool kernel at all. There is a GCC Rust frontend that is in the work, but it's not ready and the progress is quite slow. So uh, I don't know when, if ever, we will be able to write a core framework in Rust. And also, right now, Rust is still considered as an experiment. Um, so it could be removed at any time if we consider that the experiment is a failure. So for me, there's still there's some drawback from using Rust uh, in the kernel as it stands. So in general, most kernel vulnerabilities that were found, they are not in device driver, they are in core framework. So I asked ChatGPT to enumerate uh, some of them. And we can see that uh, there is file system, there is networking, uh, USB. So with the current uh, usage of Rust in the kernel, none of this will be preventable. Uh, but maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe uh, the way we're introducing Rust right now is just a step in the door that uh, will allow in the future to grow the usage to core framework when GCC RS will be ready. So one of the other drawbacks is that it's going to make the maintenance of the subsystems so much harder. There is like, I will say some random number, but most of the kernel maintainers, they don't know Rust at all. So they have to trust some external people or they have to learn themselves Rust in order uh, to know what's going on, which is, uh, will be a huge struggle both for um, merging anything Rust related inside the kernel um, and for the maintenance to make sure that nothing breaks when you modify, for example, the C side that uh, the Rust side gets updated as well. And so to, to be able to write drivers in Rust, you need abstraction for every subsystem, for everything. And all these abstractions, they are new code they will contain new bug, maybe new vulnerabilities. So that's also one of the issue with adding Rust in the kernel. But I think despite that, it's still a good idea to go toward a future with Rust in the kernel. My hope is that um, with GCC RS, we will be able to have like more core framework in Rust and uh, have less of this issue. So not so long ago, I was just a C developer. I didn't know any Rust at all. So this is my journey to learn Rust in order to be able to contribute to the kernel in Rust. So yeah, I'm not a Rust expert. I'm still consider myself to be like, a, let's say, not a newbie anymore, but uh, in the middle. And 
if you have a, if you detect any error, please let me know after the talk. So my story started like this. So I was browsing LWM and saw this post about uh, a comparison driver between a GPIO driver written in uh, C and Rust. And I tried to understand Rust at that time just by reading the source code, but I failed. <laughs> it, it was just too complicated, too different, and I didn't understand what was going on. And I gave myself as a challenge to learn Rust, to be able to understand this, and maybe make some future contribution. And also, I didn't really like the fact that there was a new language in the kernel that I did not understand, that because I want to be able, when I do some modification in the kernel, to be able to make sure that uh, all the subsystems that are involved are updated altogether. So this is the resources that I use to learn Rust. So the Rust website contains like uh, pretty good books, but for me, my favorite was the O'Reilly book from uh, Blendy. So after uh, learning Rust through reading, I tried to write kernel code directly in Rust, but it was a big, big failure on my hand because reading does not make you a developer of that language. Uh, I was trying to write C code, but with Rust syntax but uh, these two languages are way too different to be able to do that. So I went back and decided to write some user space uh, application. So I rewrote all my uh, custom tools from uh, Python, Bash, C, uh, in Rust. And it was very important in my learning. Once things was done, I went back to Linux. So at the time, this was the state of Linux. Uh, the Rust initial patch set was merged in 6.1. So you could write Rust code, uh, write docs, run a key unit, and create some module. But that's about it. Nothing was doable. No abstraction for anything. Uh, there was a lot of work on various abstractions that was done, but nothing was merged. It was like some, in some random people trees or uh, unmaintained branches. So uh, today it's also basically the only thing that you can do in Rust in the kernel, create a module and that's about it. There is a few, and there's one subsystem if you want to write a file driver for networking, it's possible, uh, but that's about it. So th there is a lot of people that are trying to contribute. So this is a list of all the effort to bring various abstraction drivers uh, to the language channel, but everything written in Rust. But the issue is that most of the people they just abandon. They write the source code, they write the drivers, whatever, and then they leave it as is because most of the dependencies are just not merged. It's too complicated to merge everything. Uh, so there's a lot of effort, but a lot is abandoned or not making any progress. Mm. There are some people that try to write some driver, but just rewrite existing C drivers, which is pointless and will never get merged. Uh, so, so this is the real things that are happening that have like, seems to have like a future that are going forward. It's the DRM abstractions. So there is one for the Apple M1 GPUs and one in, for the NVIDIA GPUs. So um, they are trying to rewrite the Android binder in Rust, and there's a couple of file system, uh, PuzzleFS and TileFS, which uh, are kind of toyish. 
and a little bit of networking as well. So for me, none of this interests me. I'm not interested in all of this. For me, I'm embedded a Linux developer, so I want to bring it to Linux. So right now, most of the work is done on x86, except the M1 GPU. Uh, there's all the key abstractions for uh, clocks, pin controller, whatever, they are all missing. So basically, you cannot do anything. There is a few abstractions available, but they are like in unmaintained and non-working state in other branches, such as uh, the minimum to write device driver and platform drivers. But so what do we need if we want to write embedded driver? I'm not talking about like a specific for one subsystem, but uh, in general, what do we need? ARM64 support, which was merged in 6.8, but the rest, like cloud pin control, runtime PM, regmap, regulators, device tree, DMA, all of this is either non-existent or uh, not upstream or non-working state. So my goal, uh, the constraint. So there's a few drivers that were written, but the issue is that uh, Maintainers, they don't want to merge something that is uh, not used by any end user. So there is like some a few abstraction like platform device that is there, but we cannot merge it as long as we don't merge uh, end user device drivers that will use it. Uh, but there is a few drivers like uh, the DRM, like that. They are complex drivers uh, that are not easy to to review, to merge, and like that. So it's 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 hard to to match everything at once. So the goal will be like to try maybe to make some simpler drivers uh, that will use the basic uh, subsystems uh, and be able to merge everything in a shorter patch set and like that. So yeah, that's what I was saying. Try to merge uh, simple drivers with minimal dependency for upstreaming and using this, this driver to get uh, everything that is kind of orphaned merged at the same time and try to cover as much of the core uh, embedded APIs as possible. So the first driver that I was working on was a regulator driver. Uh, it's used, so, so there's a link, you can check the code if you want. Uh, so here's the list of dependencies uh, on the driver that I will try to get merged at the same time. So there's a platform driver, uh, regulator driver, uh, ring map, I2C, and device tree. But th that's a little, that's a little bit uh, not enough for most drivers. So I, I wrote the second one, DSI panel driver, uh, which this time is a regulator consumer, DRM connector panels, uh, DSI, GPIO consumer. So, so the thing about uh, Rust is that you can do stuff that is type safe uh, and detect some error at compilation. So my drivers are using RegMap, and I'm using the RegMap field APIs to try to not uh, redevelop some uh, stuff that is already in the kernel. And you can do some macro magic to try to uh, generate as much code as possible. So thanks to that, you should be able to not make any error because if you try, for example, to write the wrong value to a register, it will be detected because the type will be it will be incorrect and you will get a compiler running. So what's next? So the code has been developed, but the next thing is try to upstream everything. So this will be uh, very difficult because uh, as I said, uh, do we need to write regulator driver in Rust? Probably not. 
uh, regulator written in C is probably as safe as one that is uh, in Rust. Uh, but I'm trying to use this to get as much possible merge uh, for all the abstractions such as uh, GPIO, uh, clock, and things that is used by a lot more uh, drivers. So when this will be in progress, I will try to find some other driver to cover more subsystem. So what did I learn working on all this? So abstraction, they are very complex. So if you look at this code, it, it looks a little bit like a Java with uh, so many abstraction just to hold like some pointers. Uh, if you don't know Rust, can you read this? Nope. No? Yeah. If you know Rust, can you read it? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you stare at it for long enough, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so for me, at, f at first I was not writing this at all. I was writing basically C, but in Rust. It, it takes a lot of time to start thinking in Rust and start writing this amount of abstractions for everything. So they are not like useless abstractions, they are like uh, for type safety and things like that, but it, it makes things very complicated to read, especially like if you are a C maintainer and you need to review this for your API. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So from working with Rust, basically I detected like a few ways that will, will introduce bugs. Uh, one is the ownership of resources because it's very complicated to track the sharing of resources between the Rust side and the C side. And for small uh, APIs, it should be okay, but for DRM or things like that, it will be very, very, very difficult. And the second one is linked list. Why is that? So here's some simple code that I think should be very readable. So on the left side is a, so you define a structure with a function that initializes this structure. And on the right, uh, right side, just like some Rust code using this structure. It works fine. It's a little bit similar to what you write if you write an abstraction, and it's perfectly fine. And then the maintainer of the C side decides to add a linked list. The Rust side will still compile, no problem. Except that because Rust is using move for the data structure, the address of the list will move, but since it was initialized uh, by the C side, basically after it will move, the pointers will be incorrect um, and uh, you will end up with a crash or a panic later on. This was actually my only crash when I was writing uh, abstraction in Rust, is that I didn't realize that every time there is a list, you have to make sure that the Rust abstraction will not move the memory. But th there is no uh, way to detect this at compilation or whatever, at least. I think we should write maybe some tool to detect this kind of changes on the C side so that we know that we have to update the Rust abstraction to not uh, move anymore the memory of the structure. Uh, I don't want to respond to that question. <laughs> so time for summary. So what I really liked about it is like the error handling. So there's so many ways in Rust to make error handling so easy through the result type, which force the user to know and handle errors or you don't have like to 
every time you have an error, you don't have to handle it through complex code, and you just can use uh, the question mark operator to like return the error you got to the parent. And because it's strongly typed, you never have to guess uh, the, what the API means. The number of time when I read some uh, C code and the return time is an int, what the, what the value, is it like an error, or no? Is it uh, some number of bytes written? Or if it's a pointer, it's a void uh, star uh, pointer. Is it an uh, error encoded in the pointer? Is it just null if there is an error? What is written? So, so I really like that you don't have to guess. You know just from reading the prototype of the function what you have to do. So most of the code that I've written, I had the same code in C before, so I was able to compare. Uh, so I wrote it in C, so I was able to compare how much time it was taking me to write in C and Rust. It was much faster to write in C and uh, in Rust. And the source code was much shorter, sometimes by 50%, which is pretty nice. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, you need to be very vigilant when you handle linked lists. And one of the mistakes that I did is that uh, it was for the regulator uh, abstraction. So I just wrote the full abstraction of every met method, everything. Uh, but later on, I realized that I cannot merge things that are not used. And my driver was only using like five of these eight functions. And basically like 90% was not tested and will never be able to get merged. So I wasted so much time writing code that cannot be upstreamed. And f finally, upstreaming will be very hard, maybe impossible. It, will, it depends on the maintainers of each system. Do they accept to have like some Rust code inside? It depends on them. Do we need a uh, regulator driver in Rust? Do we need write, uh, to write uh, I2C drivers in Rust? I don't know. So all of this will need to happen on the mailing list to discuss, see if it's worth it or not to have all this in Rust in the kernel. So if you want to help me contribute, here's a few links. And you can join the Zulip chat uh, as well. And thank you very much. Questions? Uh, is there a, is there I don't see any mic. No. Oh, is there a mic? Test? Yeah. So I have a, less of a question and more of a rant. So all this talk about Rust in the kernel focuses on having a Rust layer on top of underlying C which means that first you're going to have all the bugs in that glue layer. You're going to call inherently unsafe code in C, and then you're going to spend more time developing that because it's going to be in Rust. And why don't, and, and then you're, you still end up writing C code in Rust because you're going to be mapping parts of the abstractions of the subsystems you're using. Why don't we do it from, like, I, I don't know, this is, a, this is a question, genuine question. Why don't we do it from the other side? Why don't we focus on writing low level Rust code that we could call from C, for instance, for crypto routines where you require security, and then do pure Rust code? and export it to C so that you're sure that this Rust code will be safe, and then you can call it from less fragile uh, parts of the, of the C code. So, so why is there this policy that Rust is only for writing device drivers? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I cannot answer everything, but I can answer a few things. So first, we cannot write uh, crypt, I mean, core, uh, 
Rust code in the kernel because GCC RS is not there yet. And if you start writing core uh, framework like uh, cryptography or whatever in Rust, there is some architecture where that won't be able to build anymore. So that's one of the reasons. Why don't why did we merge Rust now and not wait until GCC RS is ready? I do not know. Uh, but I agree with your point. Uh, I'm not sure that writing device driver in Rust is the best option, but maybe that's just a foot in the door to try to start using Rust and then expand in the future. That's my hope. Just like having been in the, the room when some of those decisions were made, um, Drivers are an easy place to start nibbling around the edges and to try things. And where a lot of the bugs are found in the kernel, just because that's where a lot of the code is, nothing else. So it's a good place to start. And there are some good things that can be done. There's work being done, for example, to write codec drivers for, um, or you know, codec modules for the Video for Linux subsystem, which is a real source of the kinds of bugs that Russ is very good at preventing. So we'll see it move in. Um, there is resistance to getting Rust into the core. There are developers who don't necessarily want to see it there. They want to see it be much better established before they trust it into that parts of the kernel. Um, it may eventually get there, but it will take some time. Uh, thanks for the good talk here. Um, earlier on, you mentioned that um, ideally a device driver moving to Rust would be paired with the uh, uh, framework also moving to Rust. Um, but if there are orphan device drivers, and I can, I can already think of one, um, it's SPI, so the SPI framework is probably going to stay on C. Is it worth just moving the device driver to Rust to make it functional from the currently non-functional? Uh, is, is, is there a good chance of that being upstreamed or accepted? Uh, I mean, it always depends on the maintainers. Uh, so for the SPY, uh, I don't know much about the SPY side. Uh, I didn't look at it. So I, I know that there was someone working on it at some point, but uh, they stopped or did not move forward. So I don't know for what reason. So that's why I cannot say more than that about that. Any other question? Ah. And this is a question about the maintenance cycle. So I know Rust more from a user, a user space point of view, and there it's it's a nightmare if you need to like put it into distributions because it's always outdated and you always have one dependencies which needs more recent features. How do you think this will work in the kernel where you need to backport things for years potentially? So, so the goal will be to be able to support multiple versions and not stay on the latest version all the time. Right now, we are updating uh, the Rust in the kernel to be on the latest one, but it's because there is many features that are unstable and we really try to get rid of them. Uh, but uh, as soon as there is no unstable feature, uh, the goal is to keep uh, several versions of Rust, uh, older version of Rust compatible. Uh, but this will take some time to arrive there because there's still many unstable features used right now in the kernel. And uh, the issue is that the people working on stabilization is not the same people working on the kernel. Uh, so they don't have any pressure uh, to get that work done faster. So I think it's just time that will solve this issue and then we will have the same as GCC, where we support older version of uh, GCC, we support older version of Rust, so that we don't have to update for every cycle. Okay, thanks. Um, <clears throat> a big part of uh, what's really cool with Rust in, in user space is cargo and the whole ecosystem. Like, do you see a future for cargo in the kernel? So there is some talk about that. There is some way to use some crate in the kernel, but it's very complicated 
given the fact that the kernel does not want to use external code, it wants to have everything inside the kernel to be able to have reviews of it. Uh, so I don't know what will happen. I'm not making any decision myself related to that. I'm just a contributor, so I don't know what to tell you about that. But yeah, it will be nice to find a solution to be able to kind of reuse some code that is also in some crate that will have some compatible license, but uh, I don't know what more to say about that. Anybody else? Hi. <clears throat> You've mentioned that you have converted some of your existing tools uh, from C or maybe C++ to Rust, and then you have also implemented some modules, some drivers in Rust. What are the size implications of uh, using Rust in the kernel? Because there is a number of devices that are quite modest in terms of specifications, and I had a little bit of experience uh, of uh, doing what you did in the beginning, like converting some tools, and they turn out to be much bigger, or, well. So, so yeah, if you write user space, you will see uh, much bigger uh, binaries. Uh, you can, if you modify like your cargo.2ml and things like that, change the optimization, the stripping, things like that, that will bring the binary much smaller, but obviously it will still be much bigger than C, especially if you use like, things that are uh, like trait and things like that. If you I don't know what will be the impact, like if you want to use uh, Linux on STM32 or something like that with Rust enabled. Yeah, that's something that I guess, that's why we have Rust in the kernel right now as an experiment. It maybe it's just to see what happens with this kind of systems. You said that you wrote the abstractions manually? And I'm wondering what is missing to auto-generate abstractions instead. You want to generate automatically the abstractions? Why not? Uh, because it's not Rust code anymore. It's C code written uh, with Rust syntax, which is is basically not idiomatic. Uh, and I don't think it's worth it to, because so C is like a low level with uh, languages. It will be hard to transfer like some low level languages in much higher languages that have like a lot of new functionalities that are not present in C, uh, that there's no direct translation. So the, of, of course you, you can, uh, so we have like right now some, some tools that parse the dot H of the kernel, uh, write uh, all the structure, but in Rust, so that we can use the C structure in Rust. Everything like that is done automatically. Um, but if you want to write abstractions that feel like it was it's some Rust code, then I don't see a way to automate it that. Maybe for like small APIs that are simple, maybe, yeah. Anyone else? 